everyone. Today I am working on a meal in a jar. Um, well, actually I'm making several meals in jars uh, for my pantry shelf because with the heat of the summer about to set in hard for us here where we live, um, it's nice to have something in the cupboard that take, requires very little um, heat to prepare and uh, that's quick and easy so that um, we're not spending a lot of time in the kitchen. That's the goal. So today we're gonna make beef stroganoff uh, in a jar, one meal in a jar. I will um, be back to you with the ingredients right after this. to prep some of these things off camera so that you're not spending so much time watching me chop and piece and so forth. Um, I think that one of the things that I like most about uh, this recipe and other ones that are one jar meals is that it takes only really as much time to make four meals by uh, prepping the way I am as it does to make dinner, one meal. So it's definitely an efficient way to use your time. Now I don't think anybody would be fooled into thinking that the food that we can tastes the exact same way it would if we were making it fresh that day. Um, canned food has definitely a different flavor to it because the, the uh, meats and the vegetables have been cooked under pressure and then they've been stored and so they just don't have the same flavor that we might be used to. But it's worth it to give it a try and see if you can't develop a palate for canned food because it's definitely a huge time saver. I don't know about the rest of you, but I had things that I didn't eat when I was growing up or even, you know, newly married or whatever, and that in our life, our taste buds definitely change. So it's always good to give things a try that we maybe didn't care for in the past, but we've found a palate for them now. Yeah. We change, things change, and we change too. Now, I might be prepping too much onion here, but what I like to do with it, if, you know, if the tears are already rolling down my face, I might just as well continue on because then I can just pop them in a bag and throw them in a freezer and use them for soups and stews and things like that right out of the freezer and I don't have to go through that over and over again either. In fact, sometimes I have really big bags of onions in there because, as I said, if you're already crying, you might just as well carry on. It makes things so much easier when you have stuff prepped at hand. Now, I was raised on soups and stews and a lot of wild game because my dad was a big game hunter. So we grew up to be carnivores, I guess. We do enjoy meat. Every, every member, of, like my brothers and sisters, they are, they're all meat eaters for sure because it was one of the staples in our house. With dad's guiding business, a lot of the men that he guided on hunts were American who came to Canada uh, for sport hunting and they they took the, the trophy parts back with them into the United States, but they had no way to carry the meat back with them, it would spoil. So um, dad was, you know, gifted a lot of meat and uh, any meat that he couldn't use, then he would drive into town right away to the local hospital and it was donated there. Can't do that today, but that's that's how we did it. If we had an abundance and our families who lived close to us had everything they needed, 
then you would donate it. You never wasted it. So this is a good way to use things up like this too. So uh, right now I am going to just get my jars out. Maybe I'll just run through what I've got going on here. I have um, onions cut. I have the mushrooms that are in stroganoff cut and I have the beef cut into cubes. And I'm going to do up four quarts right now because that's how many will fit in my Nesco canner of four quarts um, with wide mouth rims. So I also have a few spices here, not many, and then some bullion because, or some beef broth because I think it just uh, adds something to it um, rather than than just adding water to it. I like to add either, you know, the beef broth that's already prepared like that. I don't have any of my own beef broth right now or I'd use that. Um, but this or using bouillon mixed with water would also work. I'm going to give it as much flavor as I possibly can. So right now I'm just going to mix the ingredients for the broth because I'm going to put the um, tomato paste and the spices and right into the right into the broth so that it's all ready to go. I'm starting everything cold, cold canner, cold meat, cold well not cold not entirely cold jars because they've been sitting in a warm sink. Um, I think maybe I need about one and a half liters to do four. So I'm gonna say six cups. Let's see how that goes. And to six cups, I'm going to add, um, let's see, maybe four tablespoons of, oh, this is one of those wing it deals. Uh, four tablespoons of tomato paste. And I'm being quite generous. They're quite big. Now, if you don't care for tomato paste in your stroganoff, you could totally leave that step out. I'll give this a little stir. Mix up that tomato paste before I go any further. There we go. Now I'm going to add a few tablespoons, just again to enhance it a little more, a few tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. And I want to measure it out a bit so that I'm getting some idea for you. There's one, two, three, and I think I can get uh, four. Yes, four. And that empties that jar. Mix that in. And then I'm going to add the uh, salt actually right into the jar because if I don't use all of this, um, the, the broth, then the amount of salt that is in the jar won't be correct. So I'm going to do that a little different. I'm also going to add um, to the broth, I'm gonna add a couple of rounded teaspoons of garlic because we do like garlic. And I am going to add, I, I went into my cupboard and realized I don't have any um, thyme. I only had a, had ground thyme, so I'm going to be careful with it and put in one teaspoon of ground thyme. I'm going to mix this all up. And I'm going to get out a spoon and I'm going to give this a taste. Still our best judge is when we taste food. You need to taste it to make sure that it's, it's um, pleasing to us and keeping in mind that it's going to be very concentrated when it's been canned under pressure. Now, oh yeah, that's good right now. to go. I'm going to keep this um, whisk because the time is 
still wanting to float. So I'm going to keep the whisk close to me. And I'm going to start moving the jars over here and we'll get them filled up. There we go. Yeah, they're still warm, but they're not um, hot any longer. And I will get the... I'm using four jars lids. I haven't um, found any reason to use anything else since I found these. They work wonderfully well and I have not had one buckle or give me any grief whatsoever and I definitely um, enjoy using these lids. You may enjoy them as well because the price is quite good on them and if you're interested in buying them I have a code for you, um, Silver Moments and I will put it into the description box below with a link to where you go to uh, purchase these lids. I make a little something off them if you buy them there, but I feel like this is a sure bet. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend them. So they're a good price. Go have a look. Give them a try. Let me know what you think of them. Uh, so far, everybody that I've recommended them to that's purchased them has enjoyed them. So let's get going. We're going to into the bottom of these jars. We're going to pack the meat first. And I'm not sure why. Maybe that's just habit. Um, I always put the meat in the bottom of the jar. Maybe it's because we are meat eaters and that's, you know, the thing that um, we're looking forward to in these jars. So I'm packing just packing the meat into the, the jars and um, almost half full, I guess, which is got to be a couple of cups. And I'm not like packing them down in there hard. You could um, pack them in there hard if you chose, but I have other things that I'm putting into the jars, so I want to leave some room. I would say that one of these meals in a jar would work well for two people. And I'm now adding some mushrooms, and these are just sliced up, um, what do they call them? They're like a button mushroom, the cremini kind, the baby creminis. And these are the kinds of hearty meals that I ate growing up. As I said, with my dad being a big game guide, um, we ate lots of meat, canned meat, a lot of it. Um, in the fall when the hunters would come in, of course we ate um, fresh meat and that would mean uh, we could keep it around for most of the winter just hanging it outside because it would freeze and then we were good. Um, because at that point in time we didn't have electricity yet. They had it some places in the valley, but we didn't have it for quite some time. In fact, I think we got electricity in 1961, uh, the year after my youngest brother was born, we got electricity in the house. No, wait, am I right there? Yes. And um, we had some great experiences with some of the hunters that my dad guided um, here they they came here because they could um, hunt mountain goats and mountain uh, sheep the bighorn sheep and one of them one of the guys that my dad guided his name was Asa Snyder and Asa uh, one year he and my dad traded um, their skills Dad took Asa on a free hunt, and in return, Asa uh, was a cabinet maker, and he created the cabinets that went into our old house, and that year he came a few days early, and he installed all the kitchen cabinets, which was the first time we had cabinets in our house. I mean, properly made cabinets. <laughs> this 
Now I'm just gonna fill these up to just under the bottom ring on the neck of the jar. Uh, somebody corrected me the other day and said the collar. Maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure. It would make sense though, right? Because if this is the mouth of the jar, then the narrow part underneath it could be the collar. And then I'm going to debubble de because I can see some bubbles in these. And then I'll add my salt. So I am just going to go around the jars and through the middle and make sure. And then I'll have to top these up. I am not going to fill these jars right up to that bottom rim. So I'm going to leave it a little bit underneath because I feel like these ingredients get really hot and there's a lot of them in the jar and the mushrooms is, will let off a lot of water as well the meat so I'm going to keep it a little under what I normally would just to allow for expansion while it's in the canning process. Okay and these are looking good. A little more to this one. Now I'm really glad I didn't add the salt because I still have a cup and a half left. Uh, almost two cups left. Wow, well maybe I'll have to get busy and make another batch after this one's done. Hmm. There we go. I'm just going to turn these all because I just saw some sneaky air in that one. And we don't want sneaky air in there. Because sneaky air can trap, be trapped in there and cause the food to spoil. And even if you're doing it quick and in batches, you do not need any spoilage at all. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is just, well, not the last thing, but I am going to wipe all the tops of the jars to make sure that I didn't leave any food stuck there. Now, you can use vinegar to clean the tops if that's what you choose to do. Um, I don't always use vinegar. Sometimes I just wipe them down like I am right now, and sometimes I use water. I feel like I did a good job of that. So on go the uh, four jar seals and the rings and fingertip tight. There we go. Now I'm going to uh, make sure that my uh, Weighted gauge is on exhaust. I've put eight cups of water in my Nesco canner and I am just gonna position these four jars in here and close down the lid and put it on to make sure that the lid is closed. And then I'm going to start the canner by going to high and I want the high time because I'm canning in quarts and it's meat. I need to go to 90 minutes and hit start. And that's all there is to that. Now, in a bit, because everything is cold in this canner, so it'll take a little while for this all to come up to temperature. But when it does, I can expect steam to come out of my steam vent and the machine will then start to count down when it's hit the right pressure inside, it'll start to count down to uh, 10, from 10, E10, down to zero. And then I will switch my weighted gauge back to airtight and uh, the time will start to count down my 90 minute time. And that's all I need to do for that. So when this is all done, I'm going to uh, open up one of these jars and I'm going to show you how I finish it for a meal for dinner because 
that's what's for dinner tonight at my house. Um, beef stroganoff over broad noodles, just an egg noodle. So I will be back in a little while. See you soon. Canned up the, uh, the four jars and opened one and dumped it into this pot. I just wanted to show you how I finish it. I'm going to take um, two, maybe one and a half uh, tablespoons of cornstarch and just mix it into a bit of a slurry here with a bit of water that I added to the jar. There's probably oh, maybe a little more than a half a cup of water in there. And then I'm just going to dump it into the boiling um, liquid that I took out of the jar. And we'll just keep stirring that while it thickens up. And the noodles are almost ready to go. So we're going to have dinner here very shortly. So just to add in a little bit more water to the jar, um, probably a quarter of a cup and another tablespoon of cornstarch. And I'm just going to pour and stir and we'll get that thickened up a little more. I'm also going to turn this burner down because it's hot. Here you go. That looks a lot better. Now I'm going to remove it from the heat and to this I am going to add about a half a cup of sour cream and that will finish it off. And I'll post a picture here at the end of the video to show you what it looks like when we serve it up on our plates. And I hope that you've found this video useful and if you have that you would consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, give the video a thumbs up and share it across your social media with your family and friends. And until next time, I hope that you're all well, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.